to Scott's senior pastor of the Galilean Missionary Baptist Church. Let's give him a hand. Thank you so much, son. I appreciate it. He is a, a son of Galilee Baptist Church. Uh, we thank God for this uh, choir that has been blessing us in such a marvelous way. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. This is a collective collaboration of community members and various churches coming together. So we appreciate uh, the unity that we see yeah. in this play this afternoon. My task um, is somewhat easy. My assignment at this moment is to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, when we were in the planning stages of this MLK celebration, um, I began to go into a time of prayer and seeking the face of God as to who we would invite into this city to come and to share inspirational message, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word of empowerment, someone that could speak across generational lines in order to help us fulfill our theme in seeding the dream and keeping hope alive. We're delighted today to have with us uh, one who I think is a tremendous speaker. He's going to introduce himself in his own way once he uh, takes to the podium. Um, we have a portion of his bio printed for you in the souvenir bulletin or the souvenir program, which I will not insult your intelligence by reading the uh, bio to you. This is a portion of his bio, but we are very privileged to have him here with us today in the city of Kalamazoo. The reason why I say that is because our keynote speaker today has special connections to the King family. He is one that has modeled his life after uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. For instance, our speaker uh, thought it not robbery to matriculate at the college of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. known as Morehouse College, located in Atlanta, Georgia, where he graduated in the uh, upper portion of his class. In addition to that, our keynote speaker is one of those uh, can I say, distinguished gentlemen of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, just like myself, and just like Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Can I continue? Uh, the keynote speaker also uh, was baptized at an early age at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Detroit, and it's ironic that that was Pastor Dr. King's first pastoral assignment, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Alabama. We are excited because our keynote speaker is a renowned community and social activist and one who fights just like Dr. King once did for human rights. Our keynote speaker is known both nationally and internationally. He himself is a catalyst for change in the world. Uh, if you Google him or if you look him up on YouTube for our young people, you'll see him giving numerous speeches and addresses all across the globe as he has worked to improve relations successfully between Jews, Blacks, Hindus, and Muslims. We are delighted today that in the midst of all of these accolades and accomplishments that are listed behind his name, our keynote speaker is also a preacher. And we have an array of events all week long here in the city of Kalamazoo that lift up the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But I want to point out that he was also a preacher. Dr. King was a man of faith and the Civil Rights Movement was birthed in the church. And so, as the Northside Ministerial Alliance, we have our own little flavor that we want to add to the array of colors this week as we uh, put on observances and celebrations of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So when I was thinking about who we could have as a speaker, I wanted someone that could speak also in the African American tradition of black preaching. He is the esteemed pastor of the historic Greater New Mount Moriah Baptist Church in the city of Detroit, which is a major accomplishment because he is following the great shoes of the late Dr. Benjamin Hooks, who was also a great human activist and civil rights uh, servant leader. 
and served as pastor of that church. And he has come behind Dr. Hooks and has done uh, an excellent, an excellent job. In addition to this, finally, and I'll take my seat, our keynote speaker is also the president of the Michigan uh, State uh, Progressive Baptist Convention, which the Progressive National Baptist Convention was the denominational home for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. When there were leaders in the National Baptist Convention that thought Dr. King was moving too fast, they thought he was a little too radical, thought that he was one of those young whippersnapper preachers that was getting in above his head, they separated themselves from the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so there were founders of the Progressive National Baptist Convention that embraced Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and allowed him to have a denominational and spiritual home where he could receive financial and spiritual support in his work. And our keynote speaker is the president of the Michigan Baptist uh, Progressive Convention. So we are excited, we are delighted to have him here. Because of his connections with the King family, he was just texting Bernice King moments ago. Because of his connection with the King family and how he was mentored by that family and also loved by the late Coretta Scott King, I thought that it would just be great to have him to come to speak a word of encouragement and empowerment to us here in the city of Kalamazoo. So without further ado, after this, the illustrious choir comes and gives us a selection of praise. And I don't want you to hold back. I want you to take us to church because we want this preacher to come and give us a word of inspiration and encouragement. And uh, I know that we're going to leave here, not just having said we've had a wonderful Martin Luther King program, but I want us to leave here today accepting the challenge of what Dr. King stood for and go out, leave these four walls, and make a difference in this Kalamazoo community. I introduce the song and present to others the Reverend Kenneth James Flowers, pastor of the greater new Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, Detroit, Michigan. Let us receive him well. Kalamazoo. 